We are joined now by student athletes from Baylor. The Bears are the three seed in the West. They come in 23 and 10 into tomorrow's game. And Baylor is the only team in the country to be a top three seed in each of the last four NCAA tournaments. To my left is Jalen Bridges, a senior. And then to his left is redshirt senior Ray J. Dennis. We'll open the floor for questions. Uh, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Please uh, start with your name and affiliation and, and which student athlete you're directing your question to. So if you'll get a hand up. We will get you guys microphones and get started. Uh, Justin Williams from The Athletic. Jalen, I know Langston's been banged up for a while, and he was kind of fighting his way back towards the end of the year there. With him not being available, who has to step up on this team this weekend? Um, with a guy as talented and as crucial to our plan as Langston, um, I feel like everybody has to step up, honestly. Everybody's capable of doing it. Everybody's done it before, so it's going to take a team effort to pick up for Langston's loss. In the middle here. Ray J, what have particularly the freshmen, Jacoby and Eve, meant to the team this season? And I guess what gives you belief that they still have, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of really good basketball in front of them in a tournament? Um, I mean, obviously, they're super talented freshmen, and they've been huge and, I mean, a huge part to everything we've done this year. And um, honestly, I think throughout the year, they both have grown tremendously, I mean, physically and mentally. And I really think they're like sophomores or older guys now. That's how the way I look at them. So I think their best ball is ahead of them. Therese Walker, the Associated Press. Uh, for, for RJ uh, or, and Jalen, is there somebody on the team who's responsible for setting up the handshake line during introductions? Uh, and, and, and how intricate can they be? Does everybody have their own version uh, of that handshake? You got it. Um, we don't really, we just, you know, do our little clap when we're going out. We have like a little rhythm that we like to keep. Um, we don't have any, I personally don't have any like specific handshakes with anybody because I'm, I'm going to end up forgetting it and I don't want to be embarrassed. So um, I don't know about him, but I don't have any handshake with anybody. <laughs> yeah, kind of similar. Um, I think everybody on our team has like different handshakes with different guys, but like everybody doesn't have one with everybody. So it just kind of depends. Foster Nicholas, Baylor Lariat. Ray J, how much does, I guess, this day mean to you? Didn't have to uh, shoot around at the neutral site for Big 12s. Just how big is it to get settled in here? Um, no, I mean, it, it's, it's great, obviously, to be able to shoot around and get a feel for the building before you play. But, um, I mean, I think we're more excited about playing and actually getting able to roll the ball out, whether we have a shoot around or not. Uh, Ray J, a lot of first year or you know freshman players on this team. How and why have you embraced such a leadership role this season? Um, I mean, starting with the coaches, they've uh, they've put me in a position and allowed me to be in a position to do that. And then my teammates, um, just kind of allowing me and listening and being able to allow me to lead them and, and do things like that. And then also, it helps when you're not the only guy talking or only guy leading. Like we got JB, we got older guys like Caleb who, who also take on leadership roles. Other questions for the student athletes? We'll stay here. Jalen, what has a guy like JTT meant to this team? Just everything he's been through personally, but then also having the experience of being on the national championship team and stuff like that. I mean, a, a guy like John is everything to this program. Um, I think it was very evident on senior night when he, like the whole arena just erupted when his name was called. Um, but he's everything to us, you know, he's been through a lot. And it's just really, it's more so the way that he persevered through that. Um, he was, even when he was hurt, he was probably our hardest worker last year. And that's, that's, that's honestly special. And, you know, just someone as wise as him, who's been around, who's won a national championship, you know, he's, a, he's also a great leader. So it's great to have a guy like John in the locker room. Good right here. Kennington Smith with The Athletic was said, 
four straight tournaments with a three seed or higher. Um, question for both of you, Jalen, you've been in the program for a couple of years. Ray J, this is your first year. What is it about Baylor that's enabled the program to maintain such a high level of consistency? The, the culture, for sure. Um, the culture and the, the organization that Coach Drew has created over the past 20, 21 years um, allows his teams to be able to do this year in and uh, year out, for sure. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, something about Coach Drew, he he doesn't always want, you know, the most talented player. He wants somebody who's going to be an immediate culture fit. And I feel like, especially with the freshmen that we got, you know, that, and the transfers that we got, that allows us to just keep things rolling and just keep getting back here. Other questions for the student athletes? Okay, right here. Uh, for both of you, Jalen, you go first. Coach Drew isn't the most like fiery guy, at least with the media. Is is he that you know same kind of even keeled way with you guys, but behind the scenes? And how does he then motivate you guys, or what is it about his coaching that has allowed him to have so much success? Um, Coach Drew is honestly the most positive person I've ever been around. I don't think I've ever seen him have a bad day. Um, it's just that contagious energy that he gives off you know it just makes you want to run through a wall honestly and it's it's really fun it, I've, had, I've had a lot of fun playing for coach drew these last two years right Jay? yeah i mean coach drew is super energetic super passionate and uh emotional um i don't know if i'd use even kill but i mean it's super fun to play for a guy like that who's super passionate and competitive the same way the players are right down here in the front Looking back on it now, Jalen, having four new guys around you, was it has it really been a hurdle, or did it just kind of come together rather quickly? Um, it really hasn't. It really wasn't a hurdle. Um, you know, guys like Ray J and Jay Nunn, um, Eve and Jacoby. They, it's a it's a credit to them. Their work ethic. They wanted to get better. They wanted to learn the system. So it really it, there was really no hurdle. It's just guys who come in ready to compete, ready to win. Other questions? Guys, we'll let you go. We appreciate your time, and good luck tomorrow at 1140. Thank you for having me. We're set to be joined by Coach Drew at around 1120. If that starts sooner, we'll let you guys know.
We'll be joined by Coach Drew in five minutes. Okay, up How are you? Oh man, look at this. The coffee. It's a wrap. We're joined by Baylor head coach Scott Drew in his 21st season leading the Bears program, winning this coach in program history. Coach, uh, we'll let you start us off with a statement and we'll open it up for questions. Well, it's always a blessing, uh, honor, privilege to be a part of March Madness. Really excited for our guys to have a chance to experience it. We have a lot of players this will be their first time and uh, in college uh, you dream of being a part of this so excited for it to begin. We'll uh, ask our media members again just uh, if you'll raise your hand we'll get a microphone to you and then start with your name and affiliation. Michael Higby, Lariat. Uh, obviously in Kansas City y'all didn't get that day before to get that shoot around. I mean yeah. how much of a benefit is that to get that today? Maybe to contribute <laughs> to you know get, seeing some shots go down early. Well, well definitely uh, uh, you hope it helps more than without getting in there so uh, um, and not only do you have that, then before the game, you have the full warm-up allotment time, which is, which is great as well. So um, I know our guys are excited uh, uh, to get out there and uh, uh, be a part of this. And uh, uh, again, 
if you ever uh, want to play college basketball, this is the pinnacle. This is what you, you strive for. So um, really excited for a couple of our guys that have never had this. Uh, Ray J. Dennis, it's his fifth year in college, first time experience in this. Got a question here in the front. Uh, Justin Williams from The Athletic. Coach, I know you got some questions yesterday about the, the Louisville opening, mm -hmm. and uh, you talked about that, but then there's reports that you are going to stay at Baylor. Just curious mm -hmm. if you could comment on those reports and how challenging it is to navigate that stuff while also trying to focus yeah. on the, the tournament. Well, I'm, I'm really blessed because uh, uh, got a great agent like most coaches do. They handle all that stuff and just let us coach and focus. So um, during the season, that's all I do is spend time focusing on Baylor, and um, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Foster Nicholas, Baylor Lariat, coach at the beginning of the year, I mean, the storyline was kind of having four new starters and where do you go from there? And, and looking back, has that been as much of a hurdle as you thought or mm -hmm. did the guys kind of adjust a lot quicker? Depends which game uh, you would ask that question after. But uh, uh, I know uh, the, the one thing that uh, is exciting as a coach, uh, um, uh, whenever you have as much uh, uh, turnover, um, there's a lot of first time experiences for everybody. and. Uh, you always remember your first time experiences more than uh, uh, year two, three, four, and five. So uh, it's a blessing to go through some of this stuff with the, the guys for the first time. Uh, as a staff, we can uh, shed some more wisdom, knowledge on uh, what they might be feeling going through. Uh, at the same time that there's that youthful energy of first time experience and uh, uh, things. And that's where the Big 12 conferences, uh, like all conferences are competitive um, and you feel it prepares you for the NCAA tournament. But uh, uh, being a part of the Big 12, uh, there's really no environment you're going to walk into and be intimidated this time of year. You're in the center. Isaac Bourne, Mid-Major Madness. Coach Drew, you guys have one of the best three-point offenses in the country, and then you look at, Bay, uh, look at Colgate, and they have one of the best three-point defenses in the country, ranking at 11th on Ken Palm. Mm -hmm. So how does that um, how does that adjust? Your, how do you adjust your strategy against a team that has pretty good perimeter defense? Well, I think uh, uh, first and foremost, each and every game you go into, uh, the shot quality is more important than the actual shot. And uh, whatever the defense takes away, they usually give you something else. And uh, uh, you, you try to just uh, do your best to make sure that uh, your team's getting the right shots for uh, for, for the team and what they do best. And at the same time, uh, it, there's this time of year, it's great playing somebody you haven't played. Everyone's tired of playing conference opponents. And uh, you want to play someone that doesn't know every uh, uh, tendency you have and every play call you have. So uh, excited about that. Um, but uh, Colgate, I mean, they got, they got four guys. This is their fourth time in the NCAA tournament. And uh, uh, that says a lot for their program, their coaching staff, and what they've been able to do at Colgate. Coach, you mentioned Ray J, his, his yeah. fifth season. How has he embraced that leadership role in his first year with Baylor? And is that what you expected to get out of him when he came in this season? In, in recruiting, you always hope for the best. Um, Ray J, one of the best things that uh, uh, our staff did a great job identifying his characteristics. And um, from uh, Boise State to Toledo, he had always been a great teammate and uh, a great leader. And he did the same thing with us. Um, those staffs did a great job in helping develop him. And he came into Baylor, and he's been a servant leader. Um, what can I do to help the team? And uh, the players uh, have really responded well to him because of his attitude. So couldn't be more pleased with him as a leader and a person. <laughs> okay, you're good now. Okay, I'm good. Kennington Smith from The Athletic. Kind of along those lines, Jalen said that when you're constructing your roster, you seem to prioritize culture fit maybe over just raw talent. I'm curious, yeah. what makes a player a culture fit within your program? Well, we, we got a culture, joy, Jesus, others, yourself, servant leadership, uh, guys that want to be coached, want to work, want to get better, want to be in the gym, most of all like one another. And I think uh, – um, if you make the NCAA tournament, you probably have a team that likes one another. And identifying that, I mean, uh, uh, parents can uh, uh, understand when, when you have kids, you want them to hang around other kids that make them better and, and um, bring out the best in them. And we're, we're looking for the same thing. Uh, a team that uh, uh, likes one another can bring out the best in one another. And uh, we want to be around every day. Uh, you spend a lot more time in practice than you do actually uh, in it, playing games. So uh, you want to have energy uh, givers and uh, people you enjoy working with. 
Teresa Walker of the Associated Press. Uh, Scott, you talked about the your agent dealt with that yeah. one portion of your job, uh -huh. but with this day and age, the portal opening, the, you're trying to prepare for a tournament game, uh, trying to keep players uh, yeah. looking around. How crazy is this week become for a head coach? And have is there any thoughts to help maybe fixing some of this to make it a little bit more manageable? Yeah, I know. Uh, 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 I try to stay in my lane and uh, uh, focus on what uh, I can focus on. And I know that with the portal coming open, uh, every team playing would prefer the portal comes open after season's over because you want to focus on your team. And uh, they they come to, in our case, Baylor University to play in the NCAA tournaments and have a chance to make a Final Four and win a national championship. And to give uh, your players anything less would be wrong. And so that's why you're locked in and focused on that. And it, uh, but again, part of our job is always recruiting. Um, so you're always gonna you're always gonna spend some time just with the portal. It makes it. Uh, uh, I mean, as you saw, what was it? 450 names in the first day, um, or whatever. And I'm sure that that'll keep going up each and every day. Uh, and I understand the flip side that the teams that are done playing right now want to recruit and want to find out who's staying, who's going. So uh, I don't know if I have any uh, right answers. I can just tell you if you're playing now, you you want to spend time with your team and not not focus on uh, the portal as much. To our right. Hey, Coach uh, Parthupadia from the Daily Memphian here in town uh, with Eves Missy. What's that been like molding him and developing him and where have you seen him kind of grow most uh, both on the court and off? Yeah. Well, Eve, uh, our staff did a great job identifying somebody that uh, uh, not only fits our, our culture, but uh, 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 unbelievable talent. And each and every day you feel like uh, 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 you're seeing a highlight uh, that's a top 10 play of the day, possibly in practice. So that's exciting. Uh, but he deserves uh, uh, all the credit for putting in the work, being really coachable. And uh, he's one of those guys you only have to show him once, teach him once, explain it once. And he does it. And uh, for someone that's only played basketball for two and a half, three years, being the second best scoring big in his high school team to now one of the best players in the nation, uh, his, his uh, future is really bright. And uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, we get a chance to coach him uh, uh, through the month because every week he gets better. Other questions for Coach Drew? We'll start right here and then we'll go right there. Coach, JTT, what has his presence meant for this team, just everything he's been through, but also having been on a national title team? Yeah, thanks for asking about John. Uh, uh, Jonathan Chamochach was uh, uh, one of the few guys with the national championship ring in college basketball, and uh, he had, uh, there's a shirt, uh, Walking Miracle, and literally he is for what he's overcome. Uh, and uh, he's somebody that continues to inspire, uh, motivate, lead every day. And even though uh, uh, he's not playing as much as he did earlier in his career, he, he's an unbelievable leader and uh, somebody that's really helped uh, Eve and Josh every day with his wisdom, knowledge, but also uh, he doesn't do anything at half speed. Everything he does is 100%. And uh, one of the hardest workers you'll ever be around. One of the favorite players I've ever coached. And uh, he's he's going to be really successful uh, whatever he does the rest of his life because uh, 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 he's a great young man. So thanks for asking. Right here, Coach. What does it say about, you know, for Langston? So obviously, he's going through so much adversity. But, you know, I talked to him yeah. a couple of minutes ago, and he says, you know, God still has a plan for me. I mean, what does it say yeah. about that, you know, and, even, you know, to still have him be able to even lead from the sideline, I guess? Yeah. He, 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 he's uh, uh, obviously been through a lot, but uh, his, his foundation, spiritual foundation, has really helped him. Uh, and I tell you, he's been a great. Uh, uh, I know he doesn't like to be called a coach, but he's done a great job coaching. So, uh, uh, and he'll continue to do that. And uh, he gives a lot of wisdom to our, our freshmen and first time guys. And everybody looks up to him um, because they respect how he's handled his injuries, how he's overcome, and how he's, regardless if he's played or not played, been locked in to help the team. We're inside our final five minutes with Coach Drew. We're going to the back. Hey, Coach, Mark Giannato from the Commercial Appeal here in Memphis. Um, I'm curious, this is your 21st season at Baylor. Do you feel in this day and age like almost like an anomaly? I know there's some other coaches within the big, you know, Bill Self's been mm -hmm. at Kansas a long time. But, um, and, you know, with this, we've had like kind of a generation of great coaches kind of retire in the last couple years. 
Like, do you think about that at all? Because it feels like you're maybe the next sort of generation of, you know, long-standing coach here. Do you think about a, a responsibility in that way and just sort of w what the landscape is like to have a job for 21 years like you have? Well, well first and foremost, uh, uh, really blessed and privileged to work with great coaches uh, and great players because without them there is no 21 years. And um, second of all, uh, 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 your family has to sacrifice a lot. And my wife uh, for nights that uh, you're gone recruiting and and how she's raised the kids that allow us to build a program for 21 years. Uh, at the same time, coaches that start to look back usually uh, don't go far forward very long. So um, we're always focused on the next day and, and uh, how can we uh, constantly improve and get better. Uh, one, one thing I've always respected since I got in the profession, my dad, um, uh, Naismith, uh, uh, Basketball Hall of Fame, always uh, – talked about making uh, uh, the game better and uh, I'm on several committees and always try to help with or, or give thoughts or ideas inputs recruiting calendar or, or whatnot um, with with the game and uh, I know I, I think all of us that have been around uh, long enough to start recruiting our players kids that uh, we need to we need to help make sure that the next generation uh, it, it's a better situation for them and uh, I, I do uh, appreciate having that opportunity to try to help out. Not saying uh, just because you're around longer, you have more answers, but uh, I think uh, it, uh, experience and sharing that's uh, uh, important. Go stay in the back. Sorry, have you ever, um, maybe not getting into specifics, have you ever come close to leaving and what has mm -hmm. kind of pulled you back? I think people here in Memphis might actually be interested in that from mm -hmm. because there was a... a it's a long time ago now, but there was rumblings of, of you know, 16 years ago, the same, the same type of story of, mm -hmm. that popped up yesterday was popping up mm -hmm. related to Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously you're, you've been at Baylor all this mm -hmm. time, but what, what pulls you back, I guess, without getting into specific of how close? But well, I, I think, I think uh, uh, first and foremost, I, I went to Baylor because prayed about it and felt led to go. And at the end of the day, uh, um, when God says go, uh, retire, whatever he says, that's that's all I want to do is be in his will, number one. Uh, number two, uh, um, uh, Baylor University is, is always giving us a chance to compete at the highest level. And as a coach, um, if you love the people you're with and you have a chance to compete at the highest level, that's all any any competitor wants and I mean when our staff got to Baylor our, our goal was to get to final fours win national championships we've been to a couple of lead eights we won a national championship and um, when you get there also you realize how blessed uh, uh, you probably are um, because injuries and illnesses and whatnot uh, uh, really affect your opportunity to win uh, in March. I mean, that's why it's March Madness, and it's not just March, because you expect the unexpected. I mean, we're in the house of the Grizz as well, and that's why they don't play 4-7. If they did, the best teams would always win. Um, but a 40-minute game, anything can happen. In uh, years when I thought we had the talent to win it all, uh, maybe we had some injuries, maybe we had it's, uh, some un fortunate uh, uh, breaks, but uh, that's what makes it so exciting is uh, everything has to be aligned and um, can't thank the leadership at Baylor for uh, over the 21 years giving us that opportunity and trusting and believing in us. And uh, uh, last, last with that, uh, uh, the great thing is um, Baylor is uh, the largest Baptist school in the nation, has a great niche, and uh, we prepare champions for life. It's uh, spiritual, it's academic, it's character formation, and athletic. And uh, as, a, as a coach, um, some of the best compliments you can ever get is when class players 15, 20 years ago come back and uh, still ask for opinions or advice or um, say, I remember when you said this and uh, it's really true. And now there's a lot of times they say, Scott, you're wrong on that, you know, but uh, it's great to hear every once in a while you get something right. Last one. Coach, the schedule worked out with Grand Canyon getting the late game. How, how excited <laughs> were you? To, that. Yeah. yeah, how excited were you to see that you're going to have a chance to watch? And have you talked yeah. to your brother at all about this week? Yeah, I'll, I'll always talk to my brother and, uh, uh, the only thing perfect is in the same area, but not playing each other. Uh, uh, Spokane, I, I'm, I'm much more excited uh, that we're in Memphis. Uh, we've got better ribs down here. And uh, uh, anyway, really excited for them as well. Uh, makes it tougher for my dad to figure out travel, though. Spokane to Memphis, the, no direct flights there. <laughs>
Coach, we'll uh, let you get ready for practice. Thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, guys. We'll be back at 11.50 with student-athletes from New Mexico. Thank you, Coach.